On July 11th, around 4.20 p.m. Central Time, things got a little explody at Starbase. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I'm going to do a quick episode today on the anomaly that happened yesterday at Starbase around 4.20 in the afternoon, which is... Completely coincidence, but you know, we all live in the simulation apparently. Uh, I'm gonna start off with a, a little tweet from Elon Musk that has since been deleted. <laughs> so anyway, this would be about eight minutes after because I'm on Eastern time, so it would have been 520 my time. But anyway, around eight minutes after this explosion happened, uh, we got a tweet from Elon Musk that said, yep, booster engine testing. He has since deleted that tweet, but the internet never forgets. So anyway, he may not have even known about it at the time that, that something had gone wrong, but there was a rapid Rather large explosion, as you heard right at the end of the intro sequence. And I want to point out my gratitude here to NASA Spaceflight and also to Mars Embassy. Please check out the links to the original videos in the description and, of course, subscribe to their channels. That would be really nice. So anyway, I showed the sequence at full speed earlier, but I want to show this at quarter time. This is a screen recording, so forgive the fact that there's like things going on while this is happening. But if we watch this at quarter speed, you can see that just before the ignition, there is a very, very large dump of what I assume is methane at this point, cryogenic methane. So that methane would then be converting to gases as it's expelled from the vehicle and boom, we get a nice explosion. And then of course the shockwave hits the camera and things get a little bit wonky and off kilter. Uh, you can also see, uh, let's, let's just wait just a little bit. You should be able to see the chopstick over on the right hand side from our point of view, it would be the left chopstick is actually kind of loose and wiggling around after the explosion. So hopefully that is okay. If we skip forward to here, it's running at quarter speed. So let me just go ahead and if you, yeah, see, so you can see it right there. <laughs> I'm running it a little bit faster now, so you can see it, but you can see that it's definitely wiggling around. So probably not a good thing that this happened. I then want to turn to a frame at a time here. So this is basically one frame between these two. So you can see there's a dump and then the frame after, boom, we get an entire ignition that happens simultaneously everywhere around the ship. But actually, if we check this view from Mars Embassy, you can see here, this is much further away, but you can see that what happened was it's kind of extending out to in one direction. So it's a little bit less all around and a little bit more directional, but it's a pretty significant like overall explosion. There's nothing directed about it. As you can easily see here, it's exploding all around. And just for reference, here's a Raptor 2 test from February of 2022. This is from Google Viser, I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, thank you to him as well for capturing all of this stuff. But this is frame at a time. So here we have one frame and then we have the next frame. And you can see that as opposed to a, you know explosion going everywhere, it's very contained from the nozzle of the vehicle and then a couple of frames later it immediately focuses down to an, you know a very very directional explosion and remember rockets are basically just controlled explosions so if you look at that compared to this image here you can see that this is not a standard engine startup so obviously something had gone wrong i immediately figured that what happened was that they were dumping methane you have cryogenic methane uh, remember that kerosene that the the rp1 that they use in the falcon 9 and the super heavy and other vehicles is at room temperature more or less right so it's liquid at room temperature just like gasoline and so if you dump it it's kind of in a liquid form and it's not really trying to get to gaseous form all that quickly whereas if you have methane so the methane is being dumped here. I assume this is methane. It wouldn't really make sense for it to be oxygen because it wouldn't really have anything to react against in that case. But anyway, if you're dumping methane as cryogenic, so it's very, very cold, and as soon as it hits the atmosphere, it's very hot in Texas, right? Well, anything's hot compared to cryogenic. But anyway, it's immediately turning into gas, and that gas is going to eventually potentially reach a combustible ratio with the oxygen in the atmosphere, the 21% oxygen in the atmosphere. And if it hits that ratio, 
ratio, all we need is an ignition source. And that could literally almost be anything. So as soon as I saw this, I immediately thought, yeah, this is obviously the ignition of a gaseous version of the methane that they're using. I have a lot of experience. Let's say when I was younger, I was a bit of a pyro, hypothetically at least. And I used to light off a lot of rocket engines. I used to make my own gunpowder, uh, hypothetically, of course. And I used to pour gasoline. I used to take the gasoline that my father used to, uh, you know, fill up the lawnmower and stuff like that. And I would pour it on various things and throw matches and things into it to see what happened. And I would very often get explosions that were very much like this, right? So what you would do, of course, is you, you I don't know, you pour the gasoline on some sort of surface like concrete or asphalt. It immediately starts to evaporate. It's very volatile. And once it does, you get kind of a bubble around that area that's filled with fuel and oxidizer in some sort of ratio. And if it's the right ratio, which it can easily be because it kind of works within a range of ratios. But anyway, if it's close to the right ratio, you throw a match in and you get an immediate ignition in an explosive form like this. So as soon as I saw this, I was like, oh, this is clearly the methane that was turning into gas, hit the right ratio with the atmospheric oxygen, and then something, who knows, you know, maybe there was an electrical spark or something like that caused an immediate explosion. If you look at Elon's tweet, you get NASA space flight going, holy moly, well, that was unexpected. And it was, there were no road closures or any kind of warnings about explosions. And and Mars Embassy said he was on not even very close to the southern tip of South Padre Island. I think he said he was in the middle or the northern part, and he thought he blew a flat. It was so loud and such a big impact that he thought he'd blown a flat. But anyway, Elon said, yeah, actually not good. Team is assessing the damage. So this would have been about two hours and 17 minutes after the event. So it took him a little while to find out what was going on. Others, including Pranay Pratol, obviously believed that this was a gas-gas mixture. And so that was the reason why there was a problem. And Elon responded to that saying, that is one of the things we will be doing going forward, which is creating like a sparker or something like that to keep burning off any methane as it comes out. Although honestly, with the dump that they had, but anyway, it looked like there was so much coming out of there that that was going to be a significant issue. Anyway, this is one of the things we will be doing going forward. This particular issue, however, was specific to the engine spin start test. Raptor has a complex start sequence. Going forward, we won't do a spin start test with all 33 engines at once, which is <laughs> kind of ha ha ha. So anyway, a spin start test. Basically, the Raptor engine is incredibly complex. It's a full flow engine and it requires a number of things to happen, sort of a dance to happen at the right sequence in order for it not to explode or not start. The Everyday Astronaut did a fantastic episode on this, so definitely check it out. He talks about what all this stuff is and the ins and outs of it. But basically, Elon Musk, actually in the last interview he did with Tim Dodd that was released about the engines, he talks about how in the Merlin engine, they have a single shaft with the turbines for both the fuel and oxidizer pump locked together and so they're always pumping at the same rate so there's not an issue but with the Raptor you've got two separate turbines and everything has to sequence up at the right rate so anyway they were obviously testing that but what happens the consequence of that is that they're doing a spin start test which means that they're dumping fuel and oxidizer into these things and then not combusting them so what must have happened just before you know when you, we get to this point right here when you see this all coming out that's 33 engines worth of oxygen and methane, I guess, you know, again, I'm guessing from what Elon said, that they're dumping this stuff through the engines, but not igniting them. So what should be happening, of course, if you were actually firing this off, would have been that all of this gas would have been being burned inside the combustion chamber and coming out the throat of these nozzles. So it would have all been burned up before it hit the atmosphere. But here what we've got is probably a fuel oxidizer mix plus atmospheric oxygen. Again, all you need is some ignition source. Wouldn't have to be much considering how volatile all this is because obviously if they're putting this together in the spin test they're trying to get this into the right mixture to ignite so it's primed for ignition here so yeah probably they shouldn't have done all three at once without igniting this intentionally so likely what they'll do is they'll just do a few of them at a time in the future and again Elon Musk agreeing with what I'd said earlier he said cryogenic fuel is an added challenge as it evaporates to create fuel air explosion risk in a partially oxygen atmosphere like earth so it's possible they were only doing a half spin test they may have only been using the fuel side spin up to test that out so it's possible that was only methane it's really hard to tell from the outside which one it was but it's possible that was only methane they were spinning up but the 21 percent oxygen in the earth's atmosphere is more than adequate to ignite with that anyway he said that said we have a lot of sensors to detect this more later and as of this recording the only other later i've got so far is from 127 a.m which would have been 12 30 their time he said the base of the vehicle seems okay by flashlight which literally means they were out there in the middle
middle of the night. So remember, it would have taken hours to clear this to make sure everything was safe. So they weren't going to go out, you know, 15 minutes after this explosion. In fact, there were a bunch of weird little fires and things that happened for at least an hour after the explosion. But anyway, he said, I was out there about an hour ago. We shut down the pad for the night for safety. We'll know more in the morning. So again, obviously good idea. Let the thing sit, let it detank completely, make sure it's safe before everybody goes out and works on it. But it's a really, really good sign that the base of the vehicle seems okay, because that was a very big explosion. Could easily have taken out the entire booster also if things had not gone well. So, you know, <laughs> that's a very, very terrifying thought that that whole thing could have gone up. So in terms of what could have happened, this wasn't that bad, but it's always a learning experience. I imagine this is going to put them back sometime because they're going to have to figure out some sort of safety protocol. Number one, obviously don't do the spin-up tests with all 33 engines at the same time. But number Number two, they probably need some sort of safety sparkers or something like that to be out there to make sure they're burning off the methane as it exits the vehicle if they're not igniting it to make sure that things don't reach that kind of explosive combustion potential. If you look back at the space shuttle, you can see that right before it launches, there's these little sparkers that are going out to burn off the excess hydrogen before the main engines cut on when it launches. So that's what they would probably do, I imagine. And so they're probably, they've probably got engineers this morning already already trying to figure out how to make something like that happen on stage zero. So hopefully everything's okay, nothing got damaged too much, and they can, you know, continue on without too much of a delay. But obviously this is going to slow things down a little bit because they have to make sure that they don't have a repeat of this happening again. It would be very bad. All right, so that's what we have at this point. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please do like and subscribe to this channel. And remember, NASA Space Flight and Mars Embassy, make sure that you like and subscribe to those channels as well. As always, of course, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. We've had a discussion about this over the last several hours ourselves. Been very interesting. If you want to join the team, just check out the link in the description. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.